If you look to the south of an African map, you'll find lush vegetation with loads of foliage. However, things begin to change as you go north. In the world's biggest desert, there lies something very terrifying. With miles and miles of sand dunes, the Sahara Desert stretches almost 9 million square kilometers, which is almost the equivalent of swallowing Spain 18 times. With so much unknown about the big sand nation, there is no knowing what's underneath it. What became of the Sahara? Could the mystery of the lost city of Atlantis finally come to light? Stay tuned as we look at the alarming revelations in this video. Scientists discovered beneath the Sahara Desert that the Atlantic Ocean is bounded on the west by the Sahara, on the east by the Red Sea, on the north by the Mediterranean Sea, and on the south by the Sahel Savannah. Algeria, Chad, Egypt, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Morocco, Niger, Western Sahara, Sudan, and Tunisia all make up the vast desert. But the Sahara Desert is not only known for its sand. Many years ago, the Sahara was so beautifully decorated with lush flowers and vegetation that the Amazon forest was nothing compared to it. It had greens and water everywhere, just enough animals and life to flourish. How did it now become the harsh, arid landscape that it is today? The answers date back thousands of years. Since the Sahara has long experienced periods of dampness and aridity, these variations are generated by minor hiccups in the curvature of the Earth's orbital path, which at regular intervals change the position at which solar radiation reaches the atmosphere. Throughout Earth's history, more energy has been drawn in from the sun during West African monsoon season, which causes much more rain to fall across North Africa during what is known as the African humid periods. With even more rain, more vegetation, rivers, and lakes being added to the region. But something weird happened between 8,000 and 4,500 years ago. The change from moist to dry was much faster. In other locations, this might be explained only by orbital precession. But given the rapid change, something else must have caused such a drastic event. Archaeologist David Wright describes what happened next in his investigation. He sifted through archaeological and environmental data derived mostly from sediment cores and pollen records. He observed a trend in the dates, which all looked to be from the same time period. The types and diversity of flora changed wherever archaeological evidence indicated the presence of pastoralists or people with tamed animals. Every time humans, their goats, and calves hopped across the meadows, everything went to scrub and the desert in their wake. This led Wright to assume that by overgrazing the grasses, they were lowering atmospheric moisture and increasing albedo. According to him, this may have precipitated the end of the moist era, that more suddenly the orbital variations could explain. These nomads may also have utilized fire as a land management solution which would have accelerated the desert spread. Do you imagine whales frolicking on the sweeping sand dunes when you think of the Sahara Desert? While this is exceedingly doubtful because whales cannot survive outside of water, there is proof that the contemporary whales' progenitors previously swam about in the scorching African desert. In 1902, a group of geologists led their camels into a region in Egypt's western desert. Centuries of powerful wind had molded sandstone boulders into unique patterns, and the moon was so brilliant at night that it made the sand glitter like gold. Because of the severe summer heat, a nearby hill was called the Mountain of Hell, notwithstanding the discovery of whale bones in this arid valley. The skeletons were up to 50 feet long with vertebrae as thick as bonfire logs. They traced all the way back 37 million years ago to a time when this region and all of northern Egypt was covered by a shallow, tropical sea. And while the geologists weren't aware of it at the moment, the primordial fossils under the sand would provide light on one of the evolution's most baffling mysteries. How whales became whales. The existence of feet was one indication discovered in these long dead whales. 
scientists have long thought that whales were terrestrial animals that had progressively lost their four legs when they migrated to the ocean over millennia. It wasn't a surprise when they were right. Imagine a 50-foot whale swimming towards you in shallow waters as you try to paddle your way out. Isn't that scary? Today, whales have vestigial hind limb bones as proof of this, but there was no evidence of the shift in the fossil record until paleontologists discovered legs and knees, and scores of whales remained buried at Wadi Hitan. Although older-footed whale fossils have been identified, the abundance and degree of preservation in Wadi Hitan are unprecedented. Paleontologists believe whales' landlubber progenitors were deer or pig-like scavengers living near the water. They ended up spending more time in the water some 55 million years ago, first eating dead fish by the coast, then hunting for food in the shallows, and then finally venturing further. Some of them developed characteristics that aided in water hunting. They gained weight over time since they no longer had to hold their entire body weight at sea. Their backbones became longer, as did their rib cages. Investigations found that there were two sorts of fossils found in the sand valley. One was of a gigantic mammal that had almost an eel-like body called the Basilosaurus, while the relatively tiny but strongly muscled Durudan resembled a contemporary whale until its mouth opened and revealed a jaw laced with serrated daggers rather than peg-like teeth. Interestingly, more than 75 whale fossils have been discovered in Chile's Atacama Desert, but the question still remains. What happened to them? Among scientists, there's been some disagreement. Have you ever heard about the lost metropolis of Atlantis? You'll be surprised to learn how this famous city is linked to the discoveries in the Sahara Desert. This leads us to the Sahara's Eye, commonly known as the Richat structure or the Guelb el Richat. It's a geological structure in the Sahara Desert that looks like a massive bullseye. The formation spans a 40-kilometer wide swath of Maritania's desert. For generations, only a few nomadic tribes in the area were aware of the creation. It was shot for the first time in the 1960s by Gemini astronauts, who used it as a marker to measure the progress of their landing routines. Later, the Landsat satellite captured more photographs and supplied data on the size, height, and spread of the formation. Geologists once thought the eye of the Sahara was an asteroid impact formed when an asteroid collided with the land. Long-term investigations of the rocks inside the structure, however, demonstrate that its origins are totally Earth-based, forcing geologists to seek alternative explanations. Geologists believe the Eye of Sahara is a geological dome. The formation comprises rocks that are at least 100 million years old, with some dating back to the dawn of life on Earth. These rocks include in igneous volcanic deposits and sedimentary layers that form as the wind pushes dust and water deposits sand and mud. Today, geologists can find several types of igneous rocks in the eye area, including kimberlite, carbonatites, black, and rhyolites. However, there is another explanation for this eye of Sahara. According to sources, the remains of the ringed city Plato spoke of in the 4th century BC can be found in the African country of Maritania, meaning it's been hiding in plain sight. This whole time, the search for Atlantis has been ongoing. Plato, the Greek philosopher, first described a mysterious island that appeared to have vanished in the 350 BC. Solon, an ancient Greek politician, is said to have passed on facts about Atlantis to Plato. According to sources, it is not only the precise size and form that Plato described as 23.5 kilometers wide and round, but the mountains he mentioned to the north can also be seen on satellite photography. Plato said that Atlantis was decimated in a single day of night and sorrow, and fell beneath the waters as proof of ancient rivers that ran around the city. The scientific record does demonstrate that the Earth experienced considerable climatic change approximately 11,500 years ago, exactly when Atlantis is said to have vanished. Sources also show satellite images that resemble tsunami debris. It's unlike anything anyone alive today has ever seen. Let us know what you think of the Sahara Desert discovery in the comment section below. We've reached the end of the video, and that's all the time we have. So, thank you, and we hope to see you in the next one.